Howdy everyone, this is Greg Giff. So new series, Pro Before Cruise, season two. So we're gonna start off by grabbing a few contracts. Uh, first off, we're going to grab the contract, leave the launch pad. And then we're also gonna get reach for the stars. And so with those two contracts, they're suborbital contracts and we're going to need a rocket. And here we are building our first rocket out of sounding rocket parts. Uh, sounding rockets are simple scientific rockets that don't have a whole lot of um, probes or controls to them. Basically they go up, they collect scientific data, uh, very similar to what we use uh, weather balloons for, depending on what your needs are. And you can either use a sounding rocket or a weather balloon. And uh, sounding rockets are still used today, but they were used really plentiful in the um, early part of the uh, NASA um, program. So. All right, just laying out some science. You see I'm using, uh, saying those all to waiting. That's because we're using Kerbalism and Kerbalism Science. And that works for science over time. And a big thing there is you gotta have a lot of batteries for these to run. So we'll add some extra batteries there. And yeah, Kerbalism, uh, probes before crew, and a bunch of part packs in this particular playthrough. Strategia, we'll get into that as well. That's another mod. Um, that deals with uh, fixing the administration center and making it, uh, I feel, useful. The other one, and vanilla, is not my cup of tea. So these uh, playthroughs are going to be uh, on Twitch and done live on Twitch. And this is the highlight uh, reel that you're seeing here on YouTube. So if you'd like, uh, follow me on Twitch. Again, it's Graykiff on Twitch. And you can join that community there. Uh, listen to me as I chat live and uh, yeah so just uh, finishing up looking at a few parts here uh, seeing if those fairings are going to work I decided they're clipping through the battery so not really that useful uh, so we'll go ahead with one more stage but we end up having a problem with the height so uh, go with a smaller section and that seems to work so there's the winning combination for our first rocket just a few little cleanup items here. We're going to tweak the uh, aerodynamics. The name is forgetting me. The wings. Uh, but they're not wings. The little... Uh, God, I'm having a brain fart on that. Um, fins. Fins is the word I'm looking for. Wow. Uh, so anyway, he's going to tweak those fins a little bit. And twist them just so we can add a little twist to our rocket. And uh, as is uh, always, it's going to be the grasshopper. So we're going to go ahead and launch up the grasshopper and here we go off it comes off the pad uh, probably could use a little bit more thrust uh, but it does what it's supposed to our mission is simply we're supposed to launch uh, off the launch pad staging goes okay for this one you'll notice that it's already tilting and that is a problem because like i said there's not enough thrust to keep it going upward um, the twist is helping but it's wanting to lean to one side and collecting a lot of data there um, Kerbalism is, as mentioned, data over time, and so you can see all that data collecting. You also notice that we got one of our samples, which is in the lower slot, and samples have to be returned. Data can be transmitted. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to have to just call it quits on this rocket, and so here we go. We pull the chute and call it quits. But yeah, I got a bunch of science there. Looks like 11 total. Um, got few credits there and that's the Kerbalism credits there on the left and then the normal science there on the right uh, and you'll notice the total up by the uh, money and reputation so that's something to be aware of that you get two sources of science uh, but a bulk of that is going to come from the credits that you get from Kerbalism so got a little bit of funds returned from that rocket and uh, notice there the VAB is messed up in this playthrough. I need to edit the save file and fix that. Um, I have not done that yet though. Uh, Science-wise, uh, notice here that we don't have quite enough to we do to pick up the first two. We have enough to pick up the first two, and you'll notice that the, they've been changed again. This is probes before crews, and so we're going to see a lot of different tech coming up, uh, mostly dealing with probes. Uh, so we unlock the um, larger sounding rockets here uh, from this section. And that's kind of what I'm pointing out there in the reel. Yeah, 
uh, it, it's interesting. I'm not sure why this happened, uh, but it is what it is. The VAB is fully upgraded. Um, kind of annoying for me. If any of you know how, anything about say, editing save files, uh, unfortunately, if you're watching YouTube, it's going to be a little late for me. Hopefully, I'll have it figured out by the time that you see that. Um, but uh, if you, you know, do and I don't, shoot me a, a message and I'll uh, get it figured out and get it fixed. All right, more contracts. Uh, here we go. We have one more available, and this one's Reach for the Stars. And uh, um, the Upper Atmosphere, um, as well as Orbit Kerbin, are available. Uh, we still have Reach for the Stars. Uh, reach the Upper Atmosphere, in this case, is 18,000 uh, kilometers. A pretty simple little launch. Yeah. Okay, so here we are building the new uh, bigger rocket. It's kind of funny that bigger is uh, 6.25 usually uh, for Kerbal. That's considered the on the smallest the smallest size, but uh, Sounding Rockets adds that uh, 0.3 uh, meter size. So building up the science pack on top, decided to add an inline um, mystery goo and. Uh, building a battery pack. I'm going to add a radio this time. So um, radios and communication in Kerbalism Science is really important because you're going to run out of data space quite easily. And so you need to be transmitting that data back. Um, the good thing is, is if you're transmitting data back, you don't have to worry about bringing the probes back. Uh, so that works a lot better for our playthrough. Throwing some fins down there. Uh, then messing around with the... Um, arrangement. I think I ended up, oh yeah, I ended up too tall. And so that's what I'm fixing right here is just trying to make it a little shorter. And then I want to add back the mystery goo so my part counts too high. And all the little edits trying to get this rocket off the ground. Unfortunately, it's not quite enough. And uh, we've unlocked enough tech that it's really kind of a waste, but we use it twice just because I, I like the sounding rockets. They work really well. Uh, they need to be balanced, I think, a little bit more in comparison to the other um, procedural rocket bodies. But uh, they, they, they fly really well, and they'd be a great kind of like sounding rocket or hobbyist rocket uh, built. And they look really nice. They're great models. So decide, because this was uh, on the 4th of July, to call this Soaring Eagle. And it's... Looks like it's ready to launch. Nope, got to grab all the, turn on all the science. If you're playing Kerbalism Science, that's a big one, is to make sure that you get those on, especially on your early rockets, um, because you're collecting just small chunks of science every time that you launch. Here we go. Soaring Eagle is about ready to take off. Up we go. I uh, do a lot better with the thrust balance ratio as well as that twist that keeps us going uh, straight up. Unfortunately, like I mentioned, it just doesn't have enough thrust um, to get where we need it to go because it only gets up to about 16k. But it looks pretty doing it and grabs us a lot of science. Okay, we're here to the end, just looking through the world first milestones that we've completed as well as contract we had just before that. So I usually don't include landings, but uh, this one's pretty unique, I feel. So there it goes off the parachute, and here we come down. Landed right at the VAB. It doesn't happen every time, but I thought it was kind of neat. So I left that one landing in. Yeah, I got some uh, good science from that run. Well, I end up having to do two of them. 
but that brings us up to 13 science. We're just short of that 15 needed for the first one. It's uh, 15, 18, and 20 for those first steps there. So uh, run it again, and there we go. Got 20 science. So uh, survivability has quite a few good options for me, uh, one of being that uh, side-mounted parachute, as well as some science options for doing the underwater experiments which we're going to definitely be playing around with a little bit more in this playthrough. Uh, I already have built a sub and launched said sub. It was quite fun uh, and I look forward to using that vehicle more. Uh, but yeah, I'm just uh, kind of weighing out the options here. Uh, batteries are another great one in there. In general rocketry is a lot of liquid fuel rockets which um, they're okay. They're not horrible. The problem is the tank sizes are too small for liquid fuel rockets, and you end up having to stack a bunch, which eats up your part count. And when you need those parts for science, uh, it's much easier to use uh, boosters and such to keep your part count low. So move forward here. I end up taking the middle one there, picking up the reaction wheel, which will help a bunch. So because the Soaring Eagle wasn't really soaring, we end up building uh, basically a... Uh, probe on a stick and I throw a big booster on the bottom of this and that's what's able to get us um, way beyond uh, what I needed. It actually goes above 70,000 and above um, the radiation belt so I actually ended up losing out on a contract uh, but that's okay. Uh, it uh, does what we need to. So playing around with the sizing there, I end up hitting the wrong button. And um, I realized the thrust is set really small, and that's why it wasn't working the way I wanted to. So now we have that inline reaction wheel. Uh, we can do uh, add our own spin, as well as uh, keep it stable while it's going up. Start looking at the fins. I noticed um, earlier that the uh, fire spitter parts are showing up. They shouldn't be. Uh, unfortunately, they don't work with Kerbalism, or probes before crew, sorry. That's the one that uh, changes the tech tree. Um, I also am not a huge fan of spy fire spitter parts. I put it in because fire spitter has a way to launch um, at the water, but I found a better way to launch at the water. All right, name this one Go Upper, because that's all its job is, is to go up. And here we go. I add the spin myself and go up, but the fins don't have any rotation on it, so it stops the rotation, which is kind of annoying. So I'm like, okay, well, just I want you to fly upwards. And it kind of fights me getting straightened out again. Um, and that's why I'm looking at there, seeing how much charge I've got and how much... Um, wheel authority that's set. Uh, so it spins really easy, but trying to get it straightened out doesn't work out so well. And there goes the power. Um, probably could have added batteries, but again, the goal of this was to just get it to go up. And so we just wait through that and can't abort yet, um, which is unfortunate. I was like, I just wanted to abort it at 18,000. Uh, but because I ran out of battery, I don't get to abort it and end up with uh, quite a high apple apps there, 100 and 200, something in there. Yeah, I think cross is 200 there. Yep, there's 200. Uh, so way overkill. I'm like, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. Um, again, can't do anything until it reaches space. All right, we've made it all the way to the end. I'm going to say doing this voiceover stuff is a lot harder, but... We're going to end by picking up the Enter Into Space contract. And remember, like, subscribe, share, consider following me on Twitch. And remember, love is love. This is Grikif, signing off.